uh, I think we are a, we are part of this meeting for the first time I bet. Um, so we are grateful for uh, each of your uh, friendships and a lot of warm welcome um, and all those fellowships. So we are grateful for that. So before we uh, get into whatever we are learning this evening, uh, there are a couple of things we just thought we will highlight on. On um, June 18th, uh, I think we met with the leaders after the Ambedkar Bhavan worship yeah. service. We met with the leaders and we had a red box and um, I'm not sure, blue box. Okay. So there was a lot of slips in the red box. And th there was a decent number of slips in the blue box. And uh, we had a chance to go through all that. And um, it was an exhaustive exercise. But I don't think we want to put all the details out there. But I just thought it will be nice for us to get an overall glimpse of what was the... Uh, what was the feedback from the leaders, right? So I just uh, want to quickly put it out there. Um, at some other point, we will be able to talk about all the details, but for the limited time we have and shortage of time, uh, this was the overall concern highlighted in the feedback. Um, they did say a lot of good things that's uh, happening, and but this was the, uh, the best effort to put it in a concise way. The overall concern highlighted in the feedback is the need for greater relational and cultural development within the church. There is a call for improved unity, a shift away from a corporate approach and a desire to address issues such as biases and favoritism among the leaders. Additionally, there are concerns about the effectiveness of certain programs like the dating system uh, and the need for more practical teachings and the engagement of various groups like youth singles and campus and members. Overall, the focus is on fostering a more inclusive, unified and spiritually enriching environment within the church. Amen. So, I'm not sure how far it is helpful, but that's a, uh, that's a big picture we got out of um, all the inputs. But there are a lot of uh, good inputs, good feedback. Uh, we are grateful for that. So that's something that I just wanted to put out there as a glimpse. And secondly, uh, as a staff, we had an exercise uh, for a few months on how many disciples are connected, how many disciples are not connected. That means uh, disciples who don't connect anyway. That means they don't attend a Zoom meeting or they don't come to church or they're not connected through midweek meetings. So we had an exercise like that. So again, we want to just show the big picture. This is the uh, uh, feedback we got from all the regions. Um, so we're not going to go through all the numbers. The 10 not reported, we'll work it out. So uh, out of 1465 disciples, members in, in Bangalore Church, 1224 are connected one way or another. Uh, either they are attending Zoom or some are elderly people, some are sick. Uh, and 49 are connected online. Um, and uh, and then this is a kind of a stats where people not connected for a duration of time. So we are 27 people not connected over the past three months, 14, uh, four to six months, around 30 of them for past um, year and uh, 56 of them not been connected for past two years and around 55 of them has not been uh, connected for more than two years. So I just uh, want to have an idea of that. So, in a sense, we have around 87 people who are connected, 12 person who is not connected. So, um, so keep that in your prayer and I think as every region we could reach out. I bet, you know, not because of the COVID season and many other reasons, uh, you know, people are disconnected. But I think uh, staff along with your local, uh, you know, their, uh, their team of zone leaders and all that uh, could reach out and see how we could um, help uh, or everyone to be connected one way or another. Amen. So, uh, I mean, I bet uh, many of those deeper conversations can happen locally. Uh, what can be the scenario? Okay. So, um, um, so this evening, um, we're going to spend a few minutes on this uh, idea of how your church family works. Um, Julie, can I take the water from you? Thank you. Um, I've been in the middle of some Christian education. And uh, uh, 
well, you might be wondering from where am I presenting the material. So, um, so part of my education was a particular class on congregational studies, studying out churches uh, globally. Uh, and so one of, the, um, one of the subjects that we studied in congregational studies is understanding congregation as emotional systems, how your church family works. So, um, so uh, we, I, I will present some thoughts th this evening and probably uh, we could have some interaction uh, based on what we are talking today. So, um, so when you look at the church, I know church is a God-chosen community and all that. But when you think of the church, what else that comes to your mind? Any, any analogy that comes to your mind? We can keep a little interactive. I'm sorry? Worship, okay. A place of worship. Relationship. I get it. I mean, what you can church... What you can compare the church to in a, in a general sense? God's family. I know we are highly spiritual people. Okay. <laughs> Building and a cross. That was taught in God the Gospel, you know. Sorry? Community. Right? And if you. Yes, Kiran. <laughs> Group of sinners. So I'm saying, there are a lot of spirituality and humility here. Right? And if, if you want to understand church, we also understand how does a community work. The church is basically a community. We are a group of people. And what? I know we are redeemed people. Um, we, are, we, are, we are faith based community, if you want to say precisely. But either way, we are a community. You know, many people when we came into, when we got married, we thought because we are Christians, our marriage will be, will be really holy and pure. But if you've been around for some time as a married couple, you know, we are not immune to what every other couple struggles with. Right? So, um, so the idea is, um, we have to look at the church, not just as a group of people, but when a, when, a, when a church comes together, in fact, it has become in itself an emotional system. Every family has emotional system, right? Yeah. The children, husband, wife, right? So when a church comes together, the church becomes an emotional system. So uh, we can move on. Thanks. So church family, you know, so many times we have the struggle of between an idealistic view of the church and a realistic view of the church. And I think I struggle with that too. Because uh, obviously the church shouldn't become like the world. And even worse, the, the church shouldn't become the worst than the world and community. And I bet that should be always getting better. But that will happen if, if we continue to work with reality. Rather than being stuck in an idealistic mindset. Now when some people, when, when we hear the word church fight, what comes to your mind? It, it's like an oxymoron, right? Church, fight, how can they both go together? Right? So, but the reality is, we know there is church fights. Not just in this generation, if you read the New Testament, uh, you know, the epistles, you know for sure the church, there are a lot of church fights. Right? And Paul has to deal with church fights. So we understand that, um, yes, church is something that we progressively have to grow and get better. But the challenge is to come in grip with the reality. Bible talks about we are treasures in earthen vessels. There is a tension among within ourselves, right? We are treasures, but we are we are earthen vessels, right? And I bet none of us are angels, but angels also become fallen angels, right? So, so there is a human side for all of us, and we struggle with that. Though we carry the 
the treasure within us right grace does not abolish nature which on the day of baptism all the sinful nature was destroyed and some of them struggle up with their conversion because they feel like i have done more sin after baptism than before baptism have you ever people say that especially our young people because they got baptized as a teen they didn't get enough time to sin i bet <laughs> and then they are becoming older and older in the church and they they struggle with sin and it's very confusing for them right so um grace does not abolish nature but uh, grace can work with our nature and help us to get to a better place so the whole idea of this exercise or this understanding is to come and grip with the reality and many times to make progress we have to accept the reality if the marriage has to make progress they need to accept the reality this is where my marriage is this is where my children are or this is where my ch- our church is then it is becoming a lot more easier to move forward okay so let's let's move on and we see the strong theology in the bible where where paul writes in first corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 to 26 um we all know this passage he clearly says one body with different members right and uh, i don't want to read the whole passage i wish i want to but i just wanted to uh, i want to read the end part of the passage because um, he makes a very strong understanding here because corinth is a church which had most number of battle first corinthians chapter 12 let me read to you the end part okay um but i'm reading from verse 18 but in fact god has arranged the parts in the body every one of them just as he wanted them to be right so it is god who has put everything the way it needs to be and verse 19 if they were all one part where would the body be as it is as it is there are many parts but one body and in fact he says that we need to have mutual concern for each other so the idea of church as one body with different members and the different makes the one body challenging right right in this room what makes things challenging is we all are different sometimes very very different okay so the difference shouldn't divide us the difference should complement us so that means we have to learn to look away from being a part and be more focused about the body as a whole okay so we see that one of the strong illustrations or analogy of the church in the bible that church is a body uh, and church is a family um you know and the truth is you didn't choose me and i didn't choose you to be part of this family you know it is god has chosen and, and put put us all together so the the point is we are stuck with each other in a good way for life okay sometimes have you ever thought about getting rid of people from your life get rid of this person or why i don't want this guy i don't want to work with this person and we have all those challenges but yet the truth is we have to stay as one body and wrestle through all those differences okay we'll move on okay so i just want to introduce this idea of system thinking right and uh, in in a minute i want to show an a, a diagram probably that makes things more clear uh, I, i just wanted to think about the idea of system thinking okay and i was asking some groups right our human body is combines of lot of systems right yeah. we all know we have a uh, uh, some systems you can help me out with <laughs> nervous system then respiratory system digestive system digestive system, digestive system. No nobody says you know what bro my hand is sick i am doing fine does make sense 
You, you cannot say, bro, my leg is sick, bro, but my hand is doing great. You don't say those statements. Right? If you have a leg pain or you have a leg injury and you develop fever and you say, I am sick. Because when one part is hurting, it's going to have an impact on the whole body. The whole idea is we are interconnected. The interconnectedness of the part is so critical in a church setting. Okay? And, and uh, you know, so it calls us to look as a whole, body as a whole. No doctor can just treat one part alone. He has to consider rest of the body. Right? And even now I think the science has got even more better uh, to have a holistic view to, towards medical treatment. Right? Sometimes they just gave medicines not understanding the whole picture. So the interrelatedness of the parts Gra helps us to grasp the reality. What is going on? Right? The interconnectedness. So, the system thinking is the idea of thinking how are we working together? How do we function as a family together? Right? So, thinking in those lines. Right? It's not a, how I am functioning or how you are functioning, how the hand is functioning, how his leg is functioning, no, how the body is functioning, right? So the interconnectedness functioning is drastically different from a part function. So uh, especially leadership on this level, uh, we have to think that way. We cannot be thinking about the parts functioning. We have to look at the holistic picture and ask the question how the body is functioning. So body is greater than any separate organ. The whole is greater than the sum of its parts. We all know that, right? Many of us, we do management studies and we talked about synergy, right? So the idea of body is greater than any separate organs. Now, I want to be careful in saying this and I, I don't want to um, quote out of context. If you have to lose your hand or lose your whole life, what would you choose? That's harsh. But sometimes that's the reality. If Jesus said, if hand is causing you to sin, cut it off. Now anyway, I don't want to quote it out of the context, but I don't want to help you. Jesus is saying that it's better for you to lose one part than lose the body and go to hell. So what is the idea? You have to prioritize the health of the body over the concern of a part. If it is causing unhealthiness. So we're not going anywhere here but I just want you to think about body is greater than any separate organ. So, so, so we as we come together as leadership group our bigger concern is the welfare of the church. That's the biggest concern. Right? And not about multiple opinions and views. Yes, there are differences for sure. But what is, the, what is the driving point here is more than my opinion, what is more important? The health of the church, the welfare of the church, right? And if that kind of a mindset comes when you're thinking, uh, a system thinking, we're looking at a system. So le let me just show a, 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 a diagram probably that helps us to bring this to, uh, you know, connecting, right? So this is straight line thinking, that is system thinking. A straight line thinking is the, think, the, the, the idea of cause and effect. Right? You know, there is a cause and there is an effect. So the idea of things are influenced only in one direction. Okay, so we don't think about what happens afterwards that, after that. Right? So one of the examples I can tell you is... Um, I can decide how to kick a football, right? I can be trained how to kick a football. And if I apply all the techniques correctly, the football will go exactly where it wants to go. But I cannot apply the same technique to kicking a dog. Do you think it will work? No. Okay, if you kick a dog, either the dog might grab your neck, it depends on the size of the dog and the capacity of the dog, or it might grab your leg, or it might run, 
So, because now you know that it is not one direction. There is going to be some feedback. Right? And you have to be even more careful if you are planning to kick your spouse. <laughs> because you might get a kick back. Or it might have lifetime damage in relationship. So that the straight line thinking is cause and effect. System thinking is there is a mutual influence. There is a mutual influence. What I say to you, how I say to you matters. Why? This is going to come back to me. Okay. So my cause has an effect on you. And that effect is going to create another cause that will have effect on me. It is going to be mutual. So there is going to be a mutual influence. Every cause is an effect and every effect is a cause. So we are stuck in a loop. And you got to understand that's how church works. What we did in the church stays in the church. And what was done 20 years back is still coming back as a cause effect model, right? It didn't go away, right? In my discipline talk, I said something, it just didn't go in the air. It comes back to me one way or another. Probably it takes some time. So then we, we start thinking if it is mutually influencing, then how to maintain the interaction in a healthy way. So we become a lot more responsible. Uh, in the way we do our relationships, right? A boss could afford to scream at his employee because uh, he might, sometimes you might get a feedback. The guy might go and puncture your car outside the, you know, the garage or he might throw stones at you or he might fire him and have a new employee. He can still work on it. So cause and effect works in a, in a mechanical situation or with physical objects. But when it comes to relationships, uh, we have to think as a system. Church is a system. Right? And everybody here, um, you know, are, need to be more responsible what we say, how we say. And I think by now we all are learning that. Okay? So, um, because I need to know, because the people here are dynamic. What you told me 20 years back, I can just take it and move on. But if you say the same thing today, my BP might go up or I might faint out of diabetes or whatever that is, right? So, things changes. So, it is a very, um, you know, it is some kind of a moving target for us. So, so I hope we start thinking, system thinking. Am I making sense? Are we able to, yes. the idea I'm trying to say? Okay, so another way of looking at it is, is Newton's apple, right? Newton was, we all know, I remember sitting in the tree or whatever he was doing, right? So he said, uh, we all say, whatever goes up, must come down, right? It's a law of gravity. So if a curious guy will ask the question, how did the apple go up in the first place? It is a law of gravity. Still the apple can go up, right? And then... Uh, you know, when, how did it go up to the tree in the first place? If there is a law of gravity, there is also a law of levity. Okay, that's the reason we get rain. If gravitation force is keeping all the water on the floor, we're not going to have any rain. Right? There is a system that can take things up and again bring things down. It goes. Law of gravity and uh, law of uh, levity goes together. And in fact, when an apple falls down, it can become a seed for another apple tree where the apple goes up. So what is the idea? Nothing can fall if it cannot also rise. Right? So, um, so now, I think that's a whole idea here. Uh, thinking differently. So that means... As brothers and sisters in a community, church community, we have to be mindful of how people respond or react. 
we have to be mindful okay and 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 sometimes i'm afraid to say that because in the name of i just want to be honest with you we can just thrash people i'm going to be just want to be honest with you and say everything and and that can be a disaster why because you want to be honest you are not even thinking what is that going to do to that person okay and then lay after some time he will say i also want to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> and i think along with honesty responsibility is also important right and that's why the bible calls us to a very high standard speak what builds others up be slow to speak quick to listen bible is loaded with passages calling us to respond not to react because reaction is always a reflex it is an automatic but respond is something that we choose and is extremely intentional that you want to uh, you want to respond in a particular situation so so we are not looking at people as some mechanical things because we are looking at them saying that you know how this is going to how this is going to affect that person what i'm going to say okay and that that you learn as you continue to interact right and those are golden lessons in marriage i believe right first few years we learn how things work so so system thinking is because we are we are not working with mechanical items we are working with people people react people respond people give up people are resilient at one point people are not resilient at another point uh, so we have to be mindful of where they are and uh, you know be careful how we are interacting with each other okay so moving on um so 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 the, the idea is that when we start thinking like that the question that we ask is how are we patterned what is our reactions and responses right any any seasoned husband and seasoned wife will know what will trigger his wife right if i do this it is going to be a disaster today why because we are getting to know that person and then we we love them and i bet that person has to mature and i bet there is a, a tremendous call for maturity on both the sides but we are mindful in knowing the reactions and responses patterns i think understanding the patterns is so critical how uh, our family works right and and this idea when when paul calls us as a body you know one of the idea is i don't know whether most of you might know this word called homeostatic homeostatic is basically a balance within your body okay and uh, the body fights for that balance and the and, and when that balance is destabilized um you know because of uh, whatever reason uh, then we become vulnerable to sickness we all know that right and we have to maintain this homeostatic and keeping the balance so when you when you are shocked um you know uh, body maintains temperature how much light your eyes can receive when it goes beyond that you could go blind how much of fluid should be in your body how much salt and how much body sugar or whatever <laughs> right so how to establish stability in an organism that i think we all our body fights for that right and and if a virus attacks us or injury or mal malfunctioning organ then the balance is uh, you know if the balance is lost we fall sick we become unhealthy and i bet this illustration goes to the church too yes. right and uh when the church goes through a lot of anxiety it plays on the church when there is major leadership changes when there is a political pressure not pressure pressure <laughs> which there was a pressure pressure okay political pressure and i think uh, for a season probably karnataka went through anti conversion law um that puts pressure on the church uh, you know that makes the church anxious and we have our own history 
of all that we have gone through when there is crisis in leadership and our rapidly changing cultural landscape uh, our kids are not like us even within our church there is tremendous level of generation gaps and as I, as i as i was talking to somebody we will be the only generation when we all die then the next generation doesn't even know what is life without internet because we lived with no tv black and white tv color tv this tv that tv dabba computer and all that now we all are sitting with mobiles but our children were born into an internet age they are very different from who we are and we have to know what's going on in in their lives they are rapidly changing and all these brings imbalance uh, within the church community so as leadership we have to be sensitive and ask the question what is happening to the church how the whole is wired together how are we wired and i think like how every family is unique in a sense all church is unique how are we all wired together how are we interconnected and what can we do to keeping the balance right and any change needs to be um you know um very systematic and you don't shock the system right sometimes i know many times you get very excited that you want to run and then suddenly you run for 8 kilometers and then you get fever and lie down right like brothers going to gym first day they go they get fired up and then next one month they can't even lift their hands right so you don't shock your system a good coach will say just go a little bit and then you know you let your let your body get um, accustomed like climatize your body to this new stress so all this brings um disability or it can make the church sometimes sick uh, sometimes weak or whatever that is so now why am i sharing all this because we just expect the church to be strong and fired up all the time and that is not practical without being in touch with what is going on within the church right what is going on within our system what is going on in this age so the the, the call is to understand the uh, you know how are we patterned and how things are going on within us okay we'll move on so another unique dimension uh, probably another slide we'll finish up at is the the tension the relational systems unique dimension is the need to be separate and the need to be close okay uh, as a church you know we have to be close to each other but if that closeness is going to deprive you of your personal identity then it is going to become problematic okay there is there is a tension between we being separate at the same time uh we being close to one another okay so uh, it it can happen in the marriage where uh i know bible calls us to be one flesh but that one flesh happens with mutual concern and with individuality that is involved in both the adults like it is in the divine family father son and the holy spirit they are one and yet they are unique right you see a separateness and a closeness right so uh, so this tension is important need to be separate and need to be close okay now let me uh, let me give you an example probably let's say somebody is recently widowed who lost her husband so she is going to be in a tension of accepting her loneliness and at the same time satisfying satisfying her need for support from her children this is going to be a tension she knows that i have to embrace loneliness right and last week i mean this week we went to julie's place for her auntie's 75th birthday right so she is struggling to embrace 
you know the loneliness aloneness i would say right so uh, you know so there is a battle between aloneness at the same time satisfying her need for support from her children how much should i expect support from my children how much should i be alone if the widow says that being alone is impossible i just need to be somebody has to take care of me now that's going to become problematic or if this goes to the other tangent saying she just want to be alone doesn't want to interact with the children that is also problematic how do we balance that right and she always starts struggling in her mind have i withdrawn too much or am i too much imposing on the my children that goes on constant tension okay and let me give another example let's may many many people are businessmen here right um, some of you are in high profile jobs right and let's say that your, your your work is going through a crisis you are a manager and you have to fire few people and part of the person whom you have to fire is the husband of your wife's best friend you don't want that problem okay so you know the husband of your wife's best friend now you're going to struggle right if i fire that guy and that sister will call my wife and that wife will talk to me and there is going to be translated as marriage problem right and how much objective he can be can he operate separately or he has to operate relationally that's an ongoing tension you know let, let me give another example with a staff and non staff problems right so you know let's say we are raising funds for carnival that's one of the hot topics right now going on right fest and the staff feels all the money should go to the mission and then and let's say now the staff as one the staff leader says something and another brother they both are very close friends and but the other brother feels no it has to go into building fund we have been having a church for so long we don't have a building we need to go into the building fund so what is the staff going to do he is going to give in to the pressure of his non staff friend if i say no then will our relationship break or should i give in and keep the relationship what is the best thing to do <laughs> well that's a tension we all are going to face i, I why i'm putting it out there because there is no easy answers for that there is no easy answers um you know whether i'm going am i separate or am i close it's a tension taking either extreme can be deadly we have to balance it i bet it's a lifelong learning process never attained always tested it's i don't know how how many brothers can agree with me you you feel like bro i have you know i have really given my best in my marriage another one day your wife says honey you're not spending time with me then you're like how long right or how far or how deep how wide because we we like to attain things and close the matter okay well by the way you know welcome to relationships it can never happen <laughs> probably it is attained temporarily but after some time that will be challenged <laughs> so i'm glad can i bring out all my feelings here okay? <laughs> so so what i come to understanding is i need to accept that that's how relationship works right there is a time where your wife feels i mean i'm in i'm in overflowing i'm so loved or probably your husband feels that way and then the next day morning it all's gone right it looks like you're starting from scratch and and it's a lifelong learning process so the dimension of need to be separate and need to be close so, so what to keep what to lose bro so to be in the church leadership team i should lose myself no identity and we have made that mistake in the past everybody comes into a church they'll become like us right <laughs> they'll smile like us they hug like this <laughs> they even walk like us right and you know they speak the language like us 
um, and 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 we had a pattern and said if you don't fit into the pattern you get frustrated i remember one guy in bangalore when we are he was so he was a nature guy i don't know some of you know him he had only one plastic that he's keeping with him for past 7 8 years he was so when he comes to the fest and all he will go mad <laughs> so see so much of so the guy was such a nature fan he really loved god deeply loved god uh, you know but he couldn't fit in <laughs> right so so why are we doing that people doesn't need to fit in right every every time a person comes into the church they are challenging this before our family was when the church was 100 people it was a different dynamics when the family becomes 500 so every time we are baptizing so we stop baptism no that is also dangerous when the people come in, right, uh, our dynamics are going to be challenged. But I think we have to be aware. And I think instead of thinking, straight line thinking, we have to think as a system. How things are working. And, you know, so, uh, for example, some of us, uh, including me and many times, whatever leaders said, we will do it. Do it. Right? We have a very famous name for that. What is that? Yes, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you, all the yes bros at one point will become no bros. <laughs> it is a reaction. It is an absolute reaction. It's a matter of time. From an yes bro will become a no bro. Right? Who marched for your beats is going to beat you up. <laughs> Okay, why? Because for a, for a long season of time, he didn't know his separateness. He just felt like closeness, closeness. Oh, I have to give up everything. And, and for some of them, you know, it, it can always be a nightmare. You know, that is for our kingdom kids for sure. <laughs> they feel like if I come to church, I lose all my rights. You know, I will be, uh, you know, believe many of us in this room, we can't even relate to them what emotions they go through. But the truth is they are going through. And they are part of this family. And we have to work with that. Right? We cannot live in denial and somehow expect things to move forward. So, in conclusion, um, uh, right? So, uh, this idea of self-differentiation, you know, there are many more things probably we will wrestle in future. Right? What helps uh, what helps us to bring health in a system, uh, in, in a system thinking, what brings health, right? One of the things that brings health, health is defining yourself and staying in touch with others. You have to know what you stand for, right? You have to define yourself. You need to know your boundaries, right? You need to know how far is too far for you. You have to define yourself and stay in touch with others. That means here everybody is unique. You are defining yourself. But we come together in the middle of all our differences and all that. To build what God has called us to build. God doesn't want all of us to be a group of copycats. By now we all know that. Your differences is the best contribution. If brought together with the right spirit. And tremendous responsibility. So, being responsible for yourself and responsive to others. And I just want to make a quick point on that. And there was a point as a church, we became overly responsible for everything. What is the, what would be the reaction for that over a period of time? We are going to start detaching from each other. Right, bro? Can you lead this ministry? Oh my gosh, right? I don't want to do that because I am responsible for all of their salvation. One brother said, they said all their blood is on my head. <laughs> so I can't even sleep in the night. Their blood is on my head. Right? And you are getting nightmares. <laughs> and I, I, want to, I want to suggest church at this best is only a support system. We can't be responsible for anybody. 
God has given responsibility for each of us to be responsible about ourselves. There's a tremendous personal responsibility. I'm not saying uh, we have to be irresponsible. We have to be responsive. And many of us, we try to fix others' marriages and by now we all know we can't do that, right? Okay, and I remember some of us, we do marriage sessions. We use for four hours. Our goal is to the couple has to go back smiling. <laughs> After four hours, we are crying, right? <laughs> they are smiling. And after two weeks, again, they have the fight. They come to your house and so make a smile again, bro. So, I bet we all have, God bless all of our hearts. Not one of that labor is gone in vain. Amen. But I think we have to mature. The goal is not to fix their marriages. Make them responsible for their marriage. That is our work. As a church, our goal is make people responsible for what God has entrusted them with. Right? Some, that's what we mistake that people send to teens ministry. Bro, I send you to teens ministry. Now he's like your child, bro. You are the father of all the teens ministry children. Right? There was a time I felt great about it, right? You in the KKC and like, oh my. And my, whether you say amen also, bro, you're a father of many, bro, Abraham, bro. I'm struggling with my two kids, right? <laughs> it's hard work, right? No. KKC has a place. Teens ministry has a place. At the best, we all are a support system. Right? And the goal is bringing, bring, being responsible for yourself. Right? The more responsible we are about ourselves, we are in a better place to be responsive to others' needs. Right? And thirdly, maintaining your integrity and well-being without intruding on that of others. Allowing the enhancement of others' integrity and well-being without being feeling abandoned or inferior or less of a self. Having an eye and entering a relationship with another eye without losing yourself or diminishing the self of the other. Um, that means, you know, my well-being is not a threat to you. Your well-being is not a threat to me. We are talking about mutual well-being. Okay, so, you know, I need to be in a healthy eye. You need to be in a healthy eye. And we have healthy interaction. We don't, we don't even know to lose ourselves. Right? We, you know, um, but learn to... Uh, interact with each other in a healthy way. So the whole idea of um, system thinking is how can we build a culture uh, in, the, in the community where everybody is able to embrace this. And I don't think it's going to, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy as we think, but that is the goal we should work towards. And that means we have to understand many more things about you know, why do we do the way we do and all that. So, we, we will stop here. Um, can you take this away from me?